In this video, we are going to go over another example of how to use last insert ID. Specifically, this page, we're going to create a new page called order line insert. And on this page, we're going to have four elements in our form. First one's going to be a drop down that contains all the customers. The second is going to be a text box where the user can enter an order ID. The third is a product drop down where the user can select a list of products. And then the last one is a quantity where the user can type in a number and then click submit. So when the user clicks submit, we will first either check to see if the order exists. If the order exists, we will use that order. If it doesn't exist, we will then go ahead and insert that order. The second thing is we will then try to insert the product that has been supplied into that particular order for that specific order line. So we will insert into the order line. If it already exists, we'll display that that already exists. So we're at our web server. Rather than duplicating work from before, what I'm going to do is just copy this employee skill insert and I'm going to rename this to order line insert. PHP. And then I'll go ahead and edit this file. So what we're going to do is just customize this to meet the needs of what we're doing. So the first thing that we're going to come down here is change this to say insert new order line. All right, so in our form we had four pieces. We had a drop down, we had a text box, a drop down, and a text box. So let's just keep the same order as what we had on the slide. So this first text box is going to have a label of customer. And what we're going to do is we are going to give this a name of customer ID because we are going to pass a customer ID. This is going to have as all the options a list of customers, which right now we don't have the variable defined, but we'll fix that up above. I'm going to copy this and paste it below our first input, and I'm going to name this to product because we have a drop down menu for product as well. We will then give it a name of product ID, and then we're going to echo all the products into this drop down menu. All right, so the second input is going to be a text box that contains order ID. So I'll just come in here and change this to order ID, and this is going to be a type we could change this from text to number so the user could only enter in numbers and we'll give this a name of order ID. And then finally this last piece is going to be quantity and we'll give this a type of number as well so users can only enter in numbers and then we will give it a name of quantity. The final piece of our form as you can see here is the submit button. So we are now ready to get this all set up. So we'll go to the top of the page and rather than having content and message, we will change these to include the, the drop down menus. So we have two different drop down menus. So the first one, we're going to have a list of customers. The second one is going to be all of our products. We will keep message because ultimately we want to display the message to the user. All right, so we will then connect to our database so that we can execute our queries. Since our first query is just going to populate a list of all the customers, the user isn't going to interact with the actual creation of the drop-down menu. We can just use the query syntax rather than the prepare and execute. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say select, and what we're going to do is grab everything from the customer table, and then we'll order by the customer name. This executes the query, stores it in the statement. We then use the statement and loop through and grab each row. We are going to take each one of these rows, create options out of it, and store it inside of a customer's variable, which we previously defined. Now inside of this query, we had customer ID and name. What we want to display to the user is the name, so we'll change the description to name. And what we want to pass when the form is submitted is customer ID, so we will change this to customer ID. As you can see, all the errors disappear and we have all the customer names displayed here on the right. We now need to populate the drop down menu for the products. So I'm going to go ahead and copy this information and paste it. And this time we're going to change this query from select star from lecture customer to select star from lecture product. And the name of the product is actually called the description column. 
So we will select that and then we will do a for each loop to be able to store inside of our products each one of those options. So we'll change this variable from customers to products. And now instead of customer ID, we are looking at product ID. So this is the value that will be passed when the user submits the form. And instead of the name of the customer, we are looking at the description of the product. And now you see these errors have disappeared. And we would have products, but I assume that we didn't properly define this. Yes, so we're missing an S down here on this variable. So now if we click on this, we can see all the products are listed in that drop down menu. Okay, so the next step of what we're going to do is we're going to check to see if the user clicks this submit button. If they do, we will grab the customer ID, the order ID, the product ID, and the quantity. So that's what we're going to do first is store these variables. So from the form, we named it customer-id, and we named this one order-id, and then we named this one product-id, and then we had another variable of quantity. So we will change these PHP variables to match that. So quantity and product ID, and order ID, and customer ID. So again, each one of these pieces came from the form, so we're grabbing each of the values and we're storing them into PHP variables. All right, so the first thing that I want to do with regard to the form being submitted after I've stored these values is check to see if the order exists. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select the order ID from lecture.order and I'm going to specifically look for the order ID that was provided by the user. So where the order ID equals question mark, and that's all I need to look for. So since we are now dealing with positional placeholders, we cannot use the query of our connection like we did before. We need to prepare and execute our query. So we'll prepare the query, which is this one, and now execute it. Since there is only one positional placeholder, we're just going to provide one variable here. And in that case, since it's the order ID, we're going to pass the order ID into this. This is now going to check to see if the order exists and runs if the order exists. So if the statement dot row, if the statement row count is greater than zero, that means the order already exists. So what we're going to do is we are going to get the order ID from this result. So statement fetch alone returns a single record. So we're going to grab that record, store it into the row variable, look specifically in that row variable for the order ID, because that's what we have up here in our select statement. I'm going to store that into the order ID variable. Now that allows us to display the order exists, and then we can say the order, and then give just use the order ID from our PHP variable. The order order ID already exists. Maybe we'll put like a number sign in front of that. This next else is going to check if the order doesn't exist. So if the order doesn't exist, we're going to insert a new order. So in order to do that, we're going to prepare a statement because, again, we're using values, positional placeholders that were provided by the user. So we'll insert into lecture.order, and in this case, we are going to insert an order date and a customer ID. And additionally, we're going to insert an order ID. All right, so that means we will have three question marks for our three values. So the first question mark is going to be our order ID. The second question mark is going to be now. So we could actually put now right here in quotes, or we could just not have this and replace this question mark with now. Let's go ahead and do that. And the third question mark would be our customer ID. So this would then insert that order if it doesn't exist. We will then grab the newly inserted ID. So if the order is inserted, we will grab the order ID for that newly inserted record. And then we'll say that the order has been successfully inserted and display the order ID as a new order. So we've now gone through and inserted the new order. So now we're ready to insert the new order line. So we have the order ID either from this part or from this part. So what we're going to do is check to see if the that order and that product already exists on that particular order. So we will select star from our lecture dot order line where the order ID equals question mark 
and the product ID equals question mark. So whether or not this product has already been included on that order. And then we'll pass in the values of that. So order ID instead of employee ID and product ID. This order ID comes from up above and this product ID comes from right here. This is going to check if the order line already exists. If the order already has the product, we are going to check it by saying if statement row count is greater than zero. If it already exists, we will display a message saying that that product already exists on the order line. Or optionally, we may want to update it. So let's go ahead and update it instead. So we will create a query. And this query, we are going to say update order line set quantity equal to quantity plus whatever was provided in as the quantity variable. So we'll do dollar sign quantity where the order ID equals whatever the order ID that was provided and the product ID equals the product ID of what was provided. However, again, if I were to put it right in this query like I just did, we'd be open to SQL injection. So what we need to do is prepare and execute the query. So I'm just going to copy this information from above so that I don't have to duplicate work. And I will then take each one of these variables and replace it with a question mark. So the first one is quantity, so that's going to go into our execute. The second one is order ID, replace that with a question mark. And the third one which I already have here is product ID, so I'll go ahead and change that to a question mark. So essentially, it's going to update the quantity to the value that has been specified. So we are going to add a header and message indicating that the product quantity has been updated. So we'll say updated order line quantity. So we'll say the product and then we'll give the product number. So we'll use what we have defined above. Product ID has had its quantity increased by, and then we'll put quantity, where the order ID is, and then we'll put our order ID. Let's go ahead and put our quantity in bold as well. So I'll just paste those bold tags around there. And so that will successfully update it if it already exists. Now we're going to run the following if the order line does not exist. We're going to insert into order line. And what we're going to provide for order line is the product ID, the employee ID, and the quantity. So we'll have three question marks. And we'll go ahead and paste, put those question marks here. So first we had product ID. We then had employee ID, and then we had quantity. So this will insert the new record with those. Then we can change our message to say that we inserted a new order line. And we'll say something like successfully inserted the quantity of, and then we'll just go ahead and copy this quantity from up here, quantity for, and then we'll put product ID and then we'll put number, and then we'll put product ID here for the order ID, and then we'll go ahead and put the order ID here. So order ID. I didn't put numbers in front of these, not that it's mandatory, but it will make it look similar to what we've done before. All right, so let's go ahead and run this and make sure that we have everything working. So let's go ahead and select a carpet, say order ID number 20, uh, product number, let's do birch coffee tables, and then we'll pick three of quantity. Column not found, employee ID and field list. Okay. Okay, so if we go to line 97, we will see that we didn't change this from employee ID to order ID. So let's go ahead and do that, and then let's try this again. So A carpet 20, pick birch coffee tables, and we do three undefined employee ID. So we didn't change employee ID somewhere else. Where did we not change it? This is on line 100. So this should be order ID. Third time's the charm. Let's see if this works. So A carpet, 20 for the order ID. We'll then do product of birch coffee tails, three. And we can see that order 20 already exists and that is successfully inserted the quantity of three for product ID number two for the order ID number 20. So if we did 20 again, 
and we did the product ID of Birch Coffee Tables and did three more, it would say successfully updated the quantity. And notice the order exists message. So if we did like 500 and then just selected a product and did three, um, it would say successfully inserted the new order, which has an ID of 500.